the aim of this experiment here is to test or at least investigate the idea of photosynthesis. So when you're investigating um, ecosystems about a particular organism, you need to think about the biotic factors, which are the living things, and the abiotic factors, which are the non-living things that affect your organism. And the abiotic factors of a plant are things like sunlight and soil and water and carbon dioxide in the air as well as oxygen. So this experiment is designed to have a look and investigate, you know, what, what, what are the parameters that affect our plant. Uh, one of the ways we need to store this carbon dioxide is we can store it in a bit of water. We can actually store it in some liquid just by breathing into it. A little bit of it will be dissolved into the water, forming carbonic acid. This is the same thing that you find in Coca-Cola and lemonade and things like that that are acidic, acidic drinks. And what I've got in this beaker here is not just water. We've got water, mainly, and a little thing called bromothymol blue. Bromothymol blue is actually an acid base indicator, which means that if you've got something that's very acidic, it will change to a yellow color if you've got a low enough pH. If you've got a really basic or alkaline solution, then the solution will go a bit more towards the, uh, the blue color here. So right now it's about neutral and it's got a bluish color to it. So it's gone to a yellow color in the solution. A solution is just what we call things in chemistry that's dissolved in water. I and mean, that could be a mixture of things. So now I've stored this carbon dioxide in the water. Now if I just leave it there, it'll actually start to escape. So I'm now going to pour off an even amount of liquid into each of these jars. So now we need to uh, take our plant and expose it to different conditions. The plant we will be using is called an Alodia. This will be our control, which has just the solution, and we want to see how quickly the carbon dioxide will leave the water, how quickly it will effervesce. The next one, we will seal it and contain it with the plant inside, and this will be set into the sunlight. We want to see how quickly the carbon dioxide is leaving the solution. And the last one here, we're going to do the same thing as this one, the same thing in the sun, but we're going to cover it with aluminum foil to protect it from sunlight. Now all the thing that's left to do is to take these, set them out on the windowsill, and then let it sit there for a few days. When we look at our results from a week later, um, it looks very different from what it looked like the day after we had it, a little bit earlier on. And that's because our vial here, um, where the, uh, which was exposed to the sun, it hadn't turned quite as dark as the control, which had no plant. Okay, so for photosynthesis, we know that the plants will take in carbon dioxide and it will also take in some H2O, which is water, and it will use the sunlight, so I'll put light up here, to create its food, it creates glucose. And it also, as a byproduct, it also produces oxygen. This is how the plants create their oxygen. They use the carbon dioxide, they take in a bit of water, they use a bit of sunlight, pull those molecules, pull those molecules apart, rearrange them, create glucose, and the byproduct is, uh, is oxygen gas, which it can leave out into the atmosphere. So in the case of our plant here, the Elodia plant, which I've drawn here as of a bit of a stegosaurus ladder, it's taken in the carbon dioxide, it's taken in some water, it's taken in the sunlight, and it's created the, carbon di uh, the oxygen into the top. But we know that this carbon dioxide is also moving towards the top over time because we've forced a lot of it in there, it becomes concentrated. And when things are concentrated here and not so concentrated here, it'll actually try and do its best to try and make a balance, a little bit like a balance. Not quite of an even balance, but more towards a, a bias to put most of it up into the empty gas above. So that carbon dioxide wants, over time, to go up and leave and go up into this gassy area at the top of our vials. But for respiration, that is when you take your food and you take in the oxygen gas and through eating it, you create the energy that you need. And the byproduct is what you breathe out, it's what you respire. 
and that will be carbon dioxide. So plants do this too. Now I looked this up with the biology teachers. So it seems that plants also respire. They also metabolize their food. And the byproduct they make is the carbon dioxide. But the rate at which they create carbon dioxide is not quite as quick as they produce the oxygen. So over time you expect that most of this carbon dioxide to be converted preferably into the oxygen gas. So this will be the, oh, it's a little bit like reverse. So you take in your glucose, you take in your oxygen, see this goes into the plant, the plant uses a bit of sugar, converts that back into carbon dioxide. And water. I forgot to add that too, because when you breathe out and you do this on a piece of glass, you'll notice the glass goes all foggy. That's because of all the water that was in your lungs is now coming out. So as well as breathing out carbon dioxide, you also breathe out a bit of water. So what about the case where we cover this vial with alfoil? Well, that what happens is you take out the sun out of the entire equation. So no more sunlight gets into the vial, which means that you cannot do photosynthesis. You cannot take the carbon dioxide and the water to create the oxygen gas. So these purple arrows now disappear. So all that's left over are these red arrows. So it's taken the existing oxygen from above, whatever it can, metabolizes it with the glucose, which is already within the plant because plants store their energy. It takes it, produces water, and it produces a bit of carbon dioxide. Now this water that it produced, I think that's probably the reason why we saw on the insides of our vials that they were a little bit, they covered, it, covered in a little bit of condensation. I'll go get one. Well, it could be a little bit of the water being evaporated up into the top. So the only direction for this reaction to go when you cover it up is that it can only create carbon dioxide. And if it only creates carbon dioxide, then your result will be that the solution will stay yellow because it's still full of carbon dioxide. All the oxygen up here consumed, converted to carbon dioxide. The carbon dioxide that existed down there, some of it sort of goes up, some of it stays there, but none of it's getting used up by the plant to create food. It's not using it up. I hope this video helps. Please leave a note if it doesn't or if it does. If you really like these videos, I might try and make more of them. If I hear no word, then I have no feedback to work with. So let me know if there's something you would like me to do to improve the video in the future. Or if you are a little bit confused and need a bit of an elaboration, uh, then let me know. Somewhere in the comments, you can do this on the YouTube channel if you're watching this on YouTube. If you're watching it on my website, which is anglesandasset.com, then there's a little uh, bit at the bottom of each video where you can leave a comment. So let me know what you think. Alright, see you later.